Buongiorno a tutti, grazie per essere qui con noi questa sera. Abbiamo una, come dal, dal, dalla presentazione, questa sera presentiamo due start-up, due, due scale-up, una startup e una scale-up eh, che sono state scelte insieme al team di Our Crowd. Prima di eh, iniziare a dare le parole ai founder di SciFirm e di Convivis, io eh, spenderei due parole eh, giusto per presentarvi a War Crowd per le persone che non lo conoscessero, in modo tale da dare, da contestualizzare quello che è la partnership che attualmente abbiamo con, eh, con loro. Vi condivido lo schermo giusto per un uh, one page di presentazione sintetica della, della, di Our Crowd per poi dare uh, la parola a uh, Conviviz, ai fan di Conviviz e di Safe Firm che avranno circa 15-20 minuti di, uh, di pitch, di presentazione della loro iniziativa a cui potrà seguire un uh, breve scambio di domande e vi chiederei di anticipare le domande nella chat e poi ci saranno, diciamo, una delle sessioni dedicate di Q&A nella, uh, nella settimana prossima, di cui vi daremo il calendario. Quindi eh, parto subito raccontandovi e dicendo chi è Our Crowd. Our Crowd è sostanzialmente una, uh, uno dei più grandi operatori di venture capital israeliano. Ad oggi, eh, la notizia di ieri l'altro, hanno investito quindi attraverso la uh, piattaforma e hanno convogliato più di 2 billion in 17 mila start-up e fondi che, e questo fa di loro sostanzialmente uno dei più grandi operatori di venture capital israeliani e internazionali. Quindi eh, cosa fanno sostanzialmente? Loro, eh, come potete vedere dalla, dalla, dalla presentazione, eh, danno la possibilità a eh, investitori privati di investire direttamente in aziende che loro selezionano e investire non solo nelle aziende ma creando dei fondi dedicati appunto a, questa, a queste aziende. Potete vedere la diversificazione di portafoglio che danno in un mercato, quello israeliano, che non ha bisogno diciamo, di spiegazioni da parte nostra ma sappiamo che è il maggiore, il maggiore mercato di tecnologia e di innovazione nonostante la, diciamo, la dimensione territoriale del, del loro paese. Quindi ehm, noi eh, attraverso appunto una partnership che abbiamo fatto con loro perché il nostro eh, focus è proprio quello di stimolare, di dare potere all'investitore nella ricerca appunto di iniziative eh, su cui investire e di, so di sostenere, ehm, Abbiamo fatto una parte con loro per dare la possibilità ai nostri investitori di avere una diversificazione di portafoglio non solo sul mercato italiano barra europeo ma anche internazionale e la, la serata di, que di questa serata vi pre presentiamo insieme a loro due iniziative che eh, una è israeliana che è con Viviz e l'altra invece che è basata a Singapore. La serata di questa sera, quindi potete vedere che uh, Our Crowd ha già fatto, uh, è, uno dei, è uno dei maggiori uh, investitori nel venture capital, lo rinversano direttamente e hanno avuto uh, una serie di exit particolarmente rilevanti, loro sono più di dieci anni che operano in questo settore, e evidentemente hanno un'expertise e un, uh, come dire, un modo di selezionare e poi di anche seguire l'azienda su cui hanno investito è eh, molto molto preciso, molto interessante, molto hands on, proprio con, anche qui vedete il, il, il processo di, eh, di investimento che appunto parte con una selezione, eh, una negoziazione dei deal, il fundraising e poi dopo soprattutto il post investimento che è quello che se serve anche per far crescere l'azienda. Eh, come potete vedere loro hanno, cioè noi abbiamo fatto partnership con loro e non siamo gli unici, quindi Dora ha fatto partnership con loro proprio per eh, stimolare e, e dare la possibilità anche agli investitori italiani di poter investire su questa asset class e, ehm, e siamo contenti quindi di poter presentare questa sera due iniziative in un modo un po' particolare, nel senso che proprio nella logica di diversificazione noi abbiamo creato, eh, qui interrompo la condivisione, 
abbiamo creato un eh, veicolo che abbiamo chiamato o, o, OC2 in cui un veicolo che è un veicolo di diritto italiano che investirà eh, in maniera paritaria eh, in entrambe le iniziative. Questo perché l'abbiamo fatto? L'abbiamo fatto perché vogliamo appunto dare la possibilità a, eh, ai, agli investitori di diversificare in un stesso, un, in un stesso tipo di, di veicolo. Quindi investendo in questo veicolo attraverso la piattaforma Dorway e dopo eh, vi presento poi dopo Stefano, cioè Stefano Mascetti che penso molti conosceranno che è il nostro investment manager che eh, vi spiegherà appunto nel dettaglio anche i vantaggi dal punto di vista dei costi che eh, siamo riusciti come dire a negoziare con Our Crowd e, eh, e quindi insomma le, questa opportunità è un'opportunità appunto unica perché con un unico investimento fatto attraverso il veicolo creato apposta attraverso la piattaforma Dorme, potrete investire paritario, in modo paritario in entrambe le iniziative che adesso vi presentiamo. Quindi, eh, ripeto, alla fine della sessione ci sarà il tempo magari anche per fare domande più tecniche legate appunto al, al, alla strutturazione dell'operazione, Adesso io però mi taccio e eh, do il benvenuto a eh, SciFirm e a Conviviz che eh, vi presenteranno la, eh, le loro iniziative. Hi, uh, I switch in inglese. Hi Ritesh, hi Steven, hi uh, Daniele. Hi there. Ok, we can... Uh, hi. Hello. Hello. Fine, fine. Okay, uh, the first uh, presentation is uh, of a uh, site firm, and uh, please, uh, the, the go on. Thank you. Perfect. Well, thanks very much for the opportunity, and uh, thank you very much for inviting us here. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Ritesh. Um, and I'm the founder and CEO of Cyfirma. Cyfirma is a five years old cybersecurity company. It kind of got us started in this part of the world. Uh, we started here in Singapore. We have very, very quickly graduated ourselves to other parts of the world. So today we operate out of, you know, whole of Asia, uh, pretty much the whole of Southeast Asia, Australasia, uh, Japan, India, Europe, and US. Um, now, we kind of got us started five years back. There was a very clear sort of problem which we identified in cyberspace, which we wanted to solve. Um, and that was around how do we give visibility to organization for them to understand their external threats and risk. There were a lot of solutions back in those days, which were giving the ability for organization to to have a layer of security on their perimeter security, on network security around their endpoint, around their data. But there was no security solution uh, back in those days, which was giving organization the ability to understand how good or bad they look like from outside in perspective, um, how they are being looked upon by adversaries, how invasive their digital footprint used to look like, how attractive their brand was in front of cyber criminals. Um, you know, did they had any kind of, you know, porous digital footprint, which could have been used by cyber criminals to come and attack them? Uh, what was going on in their industry, their technology, which they were using, or geolocation from where they were operating from cyber crime perspective? And finally, giving them an ability to understand who were those adversaries? Who were those hackers who were looking at attacking them? Why they were looking at attacking them? So what was their motivation? What did they wanted from those target organization? When they could, could have attacked and how they could have attacked. So what we have gone about doing, we have, we have built a SaaS based platform, which actually delivers all six pillars of external threat landscape. Uh, now, I know this is a very big, bold statement, um, and this is a new category of cybersecurity. Uh, but, you know, um, as soon as we went about actually building our platform, as soon as we launched our platform into the market, uh, we have gone about actually winning um, 
hundreds of very, very influential names. We kind of got started in Japan. Japan was our first market. And today I'm quite proud in saying that, well, at least in Japan, top 40 names of Japan, top 40 companies of Japan, pretty much every, everybody works with us. Starting from NEC to Toshiba, to Mr. BC Corporation, to Santuri, you name it. Uh, we have not actually left anybody there. Uh, we came to Southeast Asia almost a year and a half back. And very quickly, we saw a big uptake um, on our SaaS platform. A uh, number of customers from this part of the world who started to actually come to us because they were not really able to get that visibility of their external threats and risk. Um, now, again, in this part of the world, we work with largest pharmaceutical company. We are working with the defense establishment. We are working with intelligence agencies. Uh, we are working with transportation agencies of this world. Um, and then quickly, we, we went to Australia. We work in, um, well, number of industries starting from, you know, resourcing to, uh, you know, manufacturing to retail, you name it. Um, and then we came to Europe. Um, and Europe was a big success for us again. Uh, number of countries in Europe where we have got a project because, projects because of our partner there. And uh, again, it's it's a it's a big success story for us because you know our platform is able to connect to our customers and are able to give a very clear visibility of their cyber threats and risk from outside in perspective, from external um, perspective as to how adversaries or cyber criminals are looking at them. Um, we, uh, very early in the game, we kind of got funded by Goldman Sachs, Zordius, and Z3. You see our uh, investors. Um, and as you can imagine, you know, Goldman Sachs doesn't go about investing behind a, a young company. You know, they generally come at quite late. Um, so they clearly saw that this was a brand new category of cybersecurity, which Cypherma was building. They very quickly believed on this. They came into this vehicle and it has been a super successful journey for us. Um, today, I'm quite proud in saying this, that well, we have grown this company from one person to almost 80 uh, person across the globe. Uh, we have grown our business from nothing to today, um, 11 million ARR was our um, you know, last quarter number. And this is a recurring revenue. This is a you know, productized revenue. We don't do any work on services. We generally actually go about partnering with our partners um, to, to actually you know, really deliver this as a service to our client and customers. We are a pure pain product company. Um, this year, our sort of aspiration is to grow our revenue uh, to near about 18 to 20 million ARR. And next year, we are looking at potentially growing that to, um, you know, near about 36 going up to 40 million ARR. Uh, we have got a number of partners. Uh, we work with Accenture to AWS to NTD Data to NEC, and we are enrolling new partners as well. Um, and we are quite excited about you know, our platform, we are quite excited about the way market is responding back to us. We are super excited about how some of those large firms like Accenture or Kindrel of the world or IBM of the world is actually um, excited about working with us. Um, and we truly want to take that inspiration and continue to, to build Cypher. Now, a little bit of a, a sort of view about the management team. Very quickly, well, um, I'm here. My background is from intelligence. Um, I used to work with MI6. This is British intelligence. I have uh, served there for almost 10 years. I used to head the cyber warfare capability for MI6. From there, I decided to go and work with IBM Research for a couple of years in, in, in Boston in US. Um, uh, came back to Australia, I was with PwC. Um, did a couple of years of consulting work with financial institution, critical infrastructure and resourcing. And then I was given opportunity to be head of security for one of the largest resourcing company called BHP. Um, now, um, BHP was the place where the concept of Cypherma came together. Um, and I want to be super transparent with you. 
you know, back in BHP, we were actually bringing a lot of cybersecurity capability uh, because it's a resourcing company. And as you can imagine, back in those days, resourcing companies didn't have a lot of, uh, I would say, uh, well, good cyber sort of posture management capability. And we kind of built that out, but very quickly we realized that there was a capability which was missing there. And we started to look for a tool and we were not able to find a tool. And that was the time when I decided to actually start Cypher. Um, so Cypher must started in 2017. We are into our fifth year. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, very, very clearly the way we have gone about assembling our team. If you look at our chief revenue officer, he operates out of Germany. Mike Henry, who is our CTO, he operates out of uh, Singapore. Um, Anna, who heads our marketing, she operates out of Singapore as well. Uh, you've got Mark Fernandez, who heads our US. Um, Kaz, who heads our Asia. You've got Martin, who heads our Europe operation. Um, we have one number of awards. I'm not going to bore you with this, uh, but as you can see, you know, starting from Forrester to RDC to Gartner to Kupinga Coal to you name it, we have been referred in number of independent uh, sort of research firm, number of uh, startup awards, which we have won. And this is truly because of our platform and what we have been able to deliver using our platform. Um, the way to look at our platform, uh, and I'm not going to actually go into the details of this, but just to give you a little bit of color around our platform, um, what I was able to witness in BHP um, using all my traditional cybersecurity tool, I was not at all able to give a clear, comprehensive visibility of my external threats and risk. I had a number of tools which were silo solutions. They were not talking to each other. And for me to bring them together, I had to deploy a lot of human resource. And in cyber, as you can imagine, if you have a probable threat, and if you're not able to actively respond back to that in timely fashion, uh, you are gonna miss the train. And that was my situation as a head of security for one of the largest resourcing company. Um, we had a clear problem with how do we, you know, sort of combine all these different capabilities and give one comprehensive view based on which we could have gone back, taken a decision. So there was a clearly lack of that contextual detail, I would say. Um, there was a clear sort of, um, you know, uh, miss out on any any tools back in those days, at least till 2016, 17 time. There was no tool which was combining your digital footprint. And when I say your digital footprint, this could be, you know, any kind of data leak. This could be any kind of sensitive files which you have thrown out there or, you know, your, your source code or your mobile app or anything of that sort. You know, cyber criminals started to leverage those. And uh, we knew that, you know, as we go, uh, that will become one of the strongest vehicle for cyber criminals to come and use that in their favor to come and attack organization. And there was clearly no capability which was actually delivering that. Most of the cybersecurity tools were inward looking. Uh, they were always actually, you know, deployed within your perimeter into your network, around your endpoint, or around your data, but there was nothing out there which could have given us an external view of our threats and risk. And hence, we decided to actually, you know, take a guiding principle of external threat landscape management. And this concept comes from intelligence agency. Well, pretty much taken from um, all the intelligence agencies, quite frankly, they look at this um, using these six pillars, what you're seeing on the screen. So you always start uh, to look at your attack surface. So this could be your doors and windows which cyber criminals can use to come and potentially attack you. So you get to understand that first. Then you start to go and identify any kind of vulnerabilities, weakness um, on your attack surface. You marry that up with your brand intelligence, which is more about how lucrative you are in front of cyber criminals. Um, you know, are they looking at impersonating your brand, your product, your solution? And if they are, then what are they really looking at doing to you? Uh, you need to understand that. We combine that with your digital uh, 
risk discovery, which is more about identifying very quickly, you know, any kind of data leaks, any kind of sensitive files out there, um, any cases of impersonation, infringement, and all that that comes into the play. And then we give you a very quick visibility of the industry in which you are operating and what is going on from cybercrime perspective in that industry. We give you ability to very quickly understand the technological stack which you are using in your organization and how cybercrime is evolving on those technological stack. Then we marry that up with your uh, geolocation from where you're operating from. As you move from one geolocation to another, your cybercrime, your cyber criminals, your potential um, targets actually changes. And then finally, we bring our cyber intelligence capability by which we clearly tell you who are those cyber criminals who are looking at actually attacking you? Why are they looking at attacking you? What do they want from you? When can they attack and how are they gonna attack? What sort of tools, arms and emulation they will potentially use to come and attack us? Now, based on this guiding principle, we have gone about building two platforms and both the platforms are SaaS based platform. They don't require any configuration. They do not require any kind of implementation. It's pretty much, you know, we can onboard any customer, any potential customer, just by using their name and their domain. That's all we require. You don't have to give us any other information. We truly believe that, well, if cyber criminals can find your gaps, if cyber criminals can find your vulnerabilities, we as a defender, we should be able to find the same. And we should be able to actually, you know, give you a early warning for you to go back and take corrective actions. So what we have done here, we have built two platforms. Uh, the enterprise grade platform, we call it as Decipher. Now under Decipher, we deliver all six pillars, which you saw, starting from attack surface management to vulnerability intelligence, brand intelligence, digital risk, situational awareness, and cyber intelligence. We have also built an entry-level product. We call it as DTECT. Under DTECT, we deliver four pillars. So starting from attack surface to vulnerability intelligence, brand, and as well as digital risk. Now, in very simple terms to kind of differentiate these two products is in case of Decipher, we deliver two outcomes for you. We will tell you how good or bad you look like from outside in perspective. On top of that, we will tell you how porous your digital footprint looks like, how attractive your brand looks like, and who are some of those adversaries who are looking at potentially attacking you. Whereas in case of DTECH, we only tell you how good or bad you look like from outside in perspective. We are not marrying up the adversary information. And quite frankly, for SMBs or SMEs, it doesn't matter who is looking at attacking them, they clearly want to understand where their problems are from cyber perspective and how good or bad they look like from outside in perspective, right? And both the platforms are SaaS based platform, doesn't require any configuration. We can onboard any customer within an hour, we can start to deliver outcomes to you. Within 24 hours, we will bring all this into a beautiful looking dashboard where we present to you um, you know, um, everything which I was spoken about, starting from attack surface to cyber intelligence. Um, and as I was saying, like from the business standpoint, the way we go about selling ourselves, uh, Decipher has got two models. There's a power-up model and there's all-in model. Um, and for DTEC, there is a three models, you know, silver, gold, and platinum. The different price point, of course, with, with uh, you know, with, our Decipher product, which is an enterprise grade or premium product, we start generally with 120K, which is 120,000 US dollar. We go up to $300,000. Whereas in case of DTEC, we start generally with $12,000. We go up to $60,000 a year. And it's a SaaS based platform. Um, generally, this gets combined as part of you know, your security operation or your risk management capability or generally as part of your MSSP, which is managed security service. Uh, we have got a number of co competitors, but well, we do not have a direct competitor right now. Um, and that is one of the prime reason why we are growing so fast, uh, because we clearly see we are able to 
um, clearly deliver all six pillars into one single unified platform. Uh, we are the only platform who delivers better contextual detail for organizations to take corrective actions. Uh, the third point is we are able to actually potentially predict upcoming cybercrime based on um, our analytical engine, our AI ML models, which we have built. Um, by no means we are saying that we are able to predict every possible cybercrime coming towards our client and customers, but we are getting better. Today, I can quite um, honestly tell you on this platform that we will be able to predict almost 55 to 60% of upcoming cybercrime to watch you using our platform. Um, quickly, you know, as I was saying earlier, we started in Asia. Um, well, honestly, in Japan, we came to Southeast Asia, to Australia, to India. Uh, we came to Europe, and now we are in US. Um, as I was saying earlier, we have got, you know, uh, between all geos, we have got hundreds of customers uh, between enterprise and level product, which is Decipher and DTEC, we are pretty much near about actually 200 customers, I would say, uh, with whom we are working today. Um, we have got different models, uh, strategic alliance to channel to technology alliance, and these are different models under which we go and partner with, um, you know, our partners. Uh, if you look at our current partners, you've got Accenture, Kindrel, Singtel in this part of the world, NTT Data, ENY, um, you know, NEC, we've got number of channel partners globally, and we have got number of technology partners as well, uh, globally. Uh, very, very quickly, um, and I'm not gonna bore you with all this, but just on the numbers, uh, quickly, if I can, I can uh, present that to you. Um, so we kind of started, if you, if you look at uh, year before, we closed our year at 4.3 million ARR. From there, we very quickly actually, you know, um, grew to last year, which is this year, March, to 8.6 million ARR. Uh, today, if you ask us, we are at like kind of, you know, 11 million, I would say a little bit more, 11.2 million ARR um, as of, you know, um, end of October. Uh, this year, our aspiration, as I uh, explained earlier, our aspiration is to grow ourselves to 19 to 20 million ARR. Next year, we want to take that to 31, going up to 35. And year after, we want to grow up to near about 50 million ARR. Um, our gross margins are pretty solid. As you can imagine, um, we are a SaaS business. And hence, you see our gross margins being 85% on an average. Um, well, that is it. And very quickly on, on the investment, we are looking at actually raising uh, between five to $10 million. We are closing the first tranche of our investment. There is a second tranche where there is opportunity uh, for you know, like-minded partners to come along and support us in this year. Let me stop that. Thank you, Amar. Uh, are there any questions? Okay, all clear. Okay, no, I, um, volevo dirvi che comunque la settimana prossima ci saranno delle, delle sessioni specifiche di Q&A per uh, approfondire uh, il tema con, uh, con loro e la, uh, la cosa più importante è sulla piattaforma troverete tutti i documenti relativi all'investimento, la due diligence fatta e uh, la nostra tesi di investimento. Um, in questo, a questo punto, uh, ok, ok, allora, uh, thank you, Kumar. Uh, I would like to you uh, wait uh, for uh, five, five minutes, 10 minutes uh, uh, at, until the end of this session. And uh, now I'm happy to introduce you uh, Convivitz, Daniel Bashari and Steven Glant. Please, the uh, stage is yours. Thank you. Hello everyone. And thank you so much for taking the time uh, to be here today. Uh, my name is Danielle Bashari. I'm the founder and CEO of Convisit, the first AI-based digital experience data platform. Uh, we'll be right to explain what, it, what exactly it means. Um, 
I'll tell you a short story. So my background is actually from the Israeli military. I started as an officer there. Uh, I, provide, uh, I provided the strategic consulting services to various companies in the AI and machine learning uh, uh, areas. And uh, when I saw companies really struggling to find out uh, the right conclusions from their data, I understood that the main problem is the data itself. In the Israeli military, in the intelligence forces where I served, we had great data. The Israeli intelligence known, is known as one of the best in the world. Um, and the reason why uh, I thought that the companies have a problem is that they use data that is insufficient, not structured, uh, a data that really makes their life uh, uh, not that easy in making the right decisions uh, in order to grow their business and uh, grow their revenue. So that's why I decided to start uh, to establish Convisit. Uh, quickly after I established the company, with my technological background, I met Steve, uh, who has a very impressive business experience. Steve, I'll let you introduce yourself. Yeah, hi, everybody. Um, yeah, so my background, uh, I was the founder and CEO of a company called Crosswise, which was actually one of our crowd's first investments. Uh, that company had a very successful exit, was acquired by Oracle. Um, earlier in my career, I was at some other very, very successful companies, a company called Shopping.com, which was bought by eBay, a company called Conduit, which got to a billion dollars in revenue. Um, and uh, basically, after I sold my company to Oracle, I spent some time there. Uh, and then I, I met Danielle and was, was very excited about her vision and decided to partner with her. Okay. Thank you, Steve. So uh, I'll tell you a bit about the world where Convisit operates. Uh, Convisit creates uh, automatically digital experience data, data about visitors and websites and applications, their behavior. Um, there's a $80 billion market that uses this data in order to fuel their systems. For example, product analytics uh, tools, tools that use user behavior data in order to understand how to improve the application or website, how to improve uh, their business. Uh, customer data platforms, which uh, gained a lot of popularity, collecting different information about the uh, uh, customers, BI tools, automation, uh, marketing automation tools, uh, personalization tools, all these tools rely on having great uh, digital experience data, behavioral data. But uh, you can see some logos here, Google, Salesforce, SAP, the biggest companies in the world lack the information, the data that they need in order to make their tools actually work and they provide the, uh, the promise that they give to their customers. So let's understand why today's data capture process is broken. Um, let's say that I want to implement Google Analytics 360 today, or I want to implement Adobe Analytics. This process takes three to six months, usually even more, uh, just to implement these tools in the organization. It's not a one-time effort of uh, one or two people. It's usually a cross-company effort that involves product people, marketing people, developers, which are very expensive. And it's a never-ending maintenance. Uh, uh, these tools require never-ending maintenance because they need people to update tracking uh, the tracking all the time so you can see that even for a tool like adobe one of the leading company uh, one of the biggest corporates corporates in the world uh, maintaining their tool is a heavy burden um, okay let's see how it actually looks like in these tools let's say that i want to track how many people were interested in a specific product on my site uh, i want to know how many clicked on the buy now button on my website or watch the specific video. Let's take a decent example of Google Analytics. When I want to know how many people engage with a specific video on the website, let's say a full campaign video, I need a developer to add this line of code uh, at the relevant uh, page and the relevant uh, uh, part on my website. And that's how Google Analytics requires customers uh, to work in order to track the relevant, the relevant information for them. And that's how SAP, Mixed Panel, Amplitude, companies that are valued in more than a billion dollars uh, are tracking user activity today. 
it's a whole nightmare that requires a lot of manual effort and a lot of uh, a lot of resources. Okay, uh, I did this whole frustrating process. I tried to get the data that I need, but after a long implementation of six months, I usually end up with very partial data. Let's understand why. First of all, most actions are never tracked. Uh, usually companies just track the click on a buy button, but they don't understand why people eventually haven't bought the product. They don't know that it was because the image that uh, appeared for that product wasn't very attractive, or they tried to choose one size, but it wasn't available. So they had to uh, uh, give up on uh, buying this product. So actually, it doesn't explain the entire uh, the, the entire user journey. When you only track a few actions of uh, someone clicked on buy or something, someone completed the purchase, you don't really understand the full journey. Also, uh, tools today don't track what the user sees. They usually track, uh, let's say that they, I want to buy a product. When I click on the buy button, a company only collects the price and the product name. But there's a lot of information that can explain the user behavior that is not being collected. For example, uh, let's say that I want to buy uh, shoes and uh, these shoes are low in stock currently. I will probably buy them faster than uh, something that uh, is completely available uh, and uh, is, uh, is in stock. So um, that's, another, that's another point. Um, also, existing solutions don't understand the data that they collect. Uh, one, one of the biggest analytics, analytics companies uh, approached us at Convisit and told us that they want to give their customers real insights. But when someone clicks three times in a row on that arrow, uh, they, tell them, uh, they tell their customers that this is a frustrated user that uh, had a very bad experience. Although, like, because he clicked three times on the same button, nothing happened, but he actually scrolled between product images. Uh, so this is a good experience. It was fine, but uh, they don't really understand the meaning. Okay, and the last point, most of the companies uh, are not really able to maintain their analytics. Once they implement a tool like Google Analytics, Mixpanel, Adobe, uh, they find themselves breaking their funnels. Like every time that they make a change to the site, let's say, they, let's say that I want to change my green ad to bag, to red ad to cart. Every time that I'm making such a change, doing A-B testing on my site or, or anything like that, uh, my reports break just because I have to redefine the events again. I, re I have to redefine user actions in order to make things work. Um, so, uh, Steve, uh, you can take it from here. Yeah, sure. So, uh, you know, our, our solution is a real paradigm shift in basically capturing and understanding this data. Daniel, next slide. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay. So, so our product is a complete automation of this very complex uh, and manual process. We literally give our customers just one snippet of code. It takes about two minutes for them to implement it. Uh, behind that code is a very powerful AI engine that knows how to capture every user action. It knows how to structure the data. Uh, we name every event. We capture not just what the user did, what did you click on, but what was the user seeing on the page at the, at the time, which as Danielle said earlier is critical, um, right? Because you need to know what the user was looking at, not just what the user did to understand what's driving user behavior. Um, we adapt to changes automatically, so there's no more maintenance. There's zero developers involved, uh, which is a huge uh, benefit for companies. Uh, and then, we send that data into other tools. So our business model is collecting and structuring the data, and then we're sending the data into all the other tools that you saw on that early slide, all right, to all the $80 billion market of, of data-related tools. Okay, this is what our data looks like, okay? This may seem simple, but to generate this automatically is extraordinarily complex. So generate it automatically for every single click. So every click, We'll have what we call an event name here. It's add to cart click to add to cart click, and then what we call the context, which is what was the user seeing on the page at that time that was relevant to that particular thing that they clicked on. And again, we're collecting it all in a structured way and delivering it 
uh, into whatever tools the customer uses where they can take action based on it. Okay, and the vision for the company is quite simple. We want to be the single source for complete and accurate digital experience data ready for use across the ecosystem. Okay, there's tons of amazing tools, uh, big companies, small companies, uh, analytics tools, marketing tools. They all need this data. None of them have a good solution for getting it. They all rely on manual work. We want to be like Switzerland. We'll sit in the middle. Uh, we'll sit on the thousands of companies' sites. We'll solve the problem of capturing and structuring the data. And then you know we'll integrate with all these various tools. We're already integrated with many of them uh, and send the data wherever the customer wants. Okay, this is a, a real shift and a game changer uh, for, for e-commerce websites and SaaS websites and others, but those are, we're specifically focused on e-commerce and SaaS. Suddenly your time to value goes, you know, from six months to a couple of days. Uh, you don't need any developers, which again is the most precious resource in every company. Uh, your data doesn't degrade over time. As we mentioned earlier, uh, the manual approach breaks down over time. It's, it's very subject to human error. Our models are running several times a day. As things change, everything is updated. Um, and basically, our customers can really maximize the value of their tools, and they're not locked into any tool, right? Today, if you're, let's say, an Adobe customer, you, you, it's, if, even if you want to switch, it's basically impossible, right? You're talking about like a year-long process. We completely change that paradigm. So that's very, very valuable for enterprises. OK. So there's a lot of technology behind this. Uh, Convisit is not a typical startup. We actually started the company inside the Hebrew University, a renowned uh, center for AI and machine learning. And we have an ongoing collaboration with professors there. Um, I'll mention some of the technologies, the unique technologies to Convisit. But uh, as you can see here, all the building blocks that uh, appear here in purple are unique AI or machine learning based uh, technologies that uh, were developed internally in the company uh, and uh, give us this uh, amazing competitive uh, advantage. So uh, first of all, when someone clicks on an element on a website, could visit automatically understand what should be the value that, uh, that uh, will be collected. That means that someone clicks on uh, an item, will know how to call this item without any human being to tell us that. Also, we automatically group elements by their functionality. That means that uh, if you change your green add to bag on the website to red add to cart, Convisit will understand that these elements have the same functionality and they're like the same event. And when you do this change, your funnels won't break, your reports will operate as usual. Uh, and that is also something that is very unique to us. Besides that, we automatically collect the properties, the extra information, the context that appear next to each action. That's how Convisit knows, for example, that uh, when I click on add to bag, I should also track the low in stock label that appeared next to it or the available sizes and unavailable sizes. All this information is being collected automatically and we only track the relevant information. That's also a unique technology to Convisit. All these technologies together enable us to uh, maintain tracking continuity over time. On top of the AI or machine learning based technologies, we uh, developed some nice user interfaces, which uh, make our, simple, our product very simple and easy to use. So we have the data control console, which is a nice user interface that allows customers to get a catalog of all the available user actions, events on their site. We have an automated data lake delivery uh, and integrated platform delivery, we can deliver our data into any platform. The $80 billion market can enjoy, can visit data, and we can fuel any of these systems, any of these systems and send our data every 30 minutes into your marketing automation, analytics tools, BI tools. Uh, they can all enjoy, can visit data and uh, utilize it to generate better insights, to perform better personalization, and so on. Um, and uh, on top of this, we have also semantic event mapping. So big companies, agencies can create predefined reports and then uh, by mapping our events into their terminology, they can create one report that will serve hundreds or even thousands of customers. So that's uh, the technology in high level. Um, 
now uh, let's talk about the market uh, and the competition. Yeah, so basically, so, so the market today is 99% uh, basically the manual process that we described earlier um, using tools like Google Tag Manager. Um, again, very technical uh, developer-led process. Um, there are two companies that have somewhat competitive products. Uh, one is a company called Heap Analytics, which has a manual uh, but UI-based product that doesn't require developers. Uh, however, their product is bundled with their own analytics tool. So they compete with like Google Analytics and Adobe. Uh, so they have some similar technology. It's not an AI machine learning product like ours is, which is truly automatic. Their product still has a tremendous amount of manual work just by different people. Uh, but more importantly, they're not competing with us because their product uh, is bundled with their own analytics tool. Whereas, you know, what we see in the market is that this technology should be broken off from a particular tool, right? So they can feed the whole market. Um, there is a company called Fresh Paint, which is a Silicon Valley company. Um, people who came out of Heap and had the same vision as we have in terms of that this type of technology needs to be broken off from a particular tool. Uh, but again, their product is very manual. Uh, it's again, just doesn't require developers. Uh, you know, we've spoken to many, many people and, and our technology is, is not even, not in the same league uh, where, you know, uh, something completely order of magnitude uh, in terms of uh, our ability to really automate the process. Okay, our go to market uh, is, is quite simple. Um, we've got, you know, we're targeting customers where we can deliver quick time to value, uh, focusing a lot on partnering uh, with resellers and especially the vendors of these tools because we help them tremendously because, you know, they're suffering in their sales. We also have a direct uh, sales process as well, targeted on e commerce and, and SaaS companies. Okay, the business model is very, very simple, standard in this market. It's event-based, so the more volume you have, the more you pay. Uh, the gross margins here are off the charts. Um, you know, it's 90% plus. Uh, our, our costs are very, very minimal. We don't have the visualization and other costs that some other companies had. Uh, so we, we've been in the market for a short period of time. We've got really amazing early traction. Uh, both with uh, customers, so we've got some paying customers already. We have others in you know various process of uh, implementing trials, etc. Uh, probably the company that you guys would would uh, know most is Easy Park, um, which is a uh, you know launching with us in January. Uh, they're very excited. They work with Mixpanel, which is one of the big platforms, and someone from Mixpanel referred them to us. Um, and so that's kind of on the, on the direct customer side. Uh, we also had very, very strong partnerships that we're very, very optimistic about. Um, our most significant partnerships are with Amplitude, Mixpanel, and Kissmetrics. So Amplitude is a huge public company, uh, competes with Adobe and Google Analytics. Um, again, these companies at first didn't believe that we had this solution because uh, this is an old problem. Uh, but they have really started to dig in with us now. Amplitude has brought us into a deal with one of the biggest media companies in the world. It would be for can visit a six-figure deal. Um, Mixpanel has really dug in with us as well. Um, again, we solve a critical problem for these guys. We just got our first customer referral from Kissmetrics. Uh, so, so not only do we have very high gross margins, just in terms of the, our technology costs are very limited, uh, we can build this company with almost zero sales costs because these companies, they don't want anything from us. They don't want any money. They don't want referral fees. They just want our product because they want to sell more. So that's really, really exciting. Uh, and, and, and basically going into next year, uh, we, you know, we're looking to scale really, really quickly, again, with adding very, very few additional people and costs. So uh, that's a, a really kind of you know, exciting model. Uh, on the bottom line here, we have also some resellers. Uh, one of our resellers actually invested in the company, a company called iNet Asia, which is a, a reseller uh, in Asia. So they were so excited and, and you know, basically saw something so unique. Uh, so 
early days, but you know, really good initial traction and a uh, you know strong uh, you know pipeline going into next year, uh, working both direct and with our partners. Mm -hmm. I'll also share that although the company is uh, it's early days, uh, we're getting interest from some of the biggest companies in the world, uh, like uh, let's uh, mention a few. Microsoft, SAP, Google, Mixpanel, Amplitude, Salesforce, all these companies, they lack the capabilities or the technology that we have, and they all suffer from the same problem. We, we've been approached by uh, some of them, uh, both uh, in the past and uh, recently. So uh, it's, a very, it's a well-known problem that uh, is very difficult to solve. And uh, I think that uh, it's quite unique that such a young company uh, with a relatively uh, uh, modest valuation gets such, a, such an interest at, uh, like at uh, its early days. So uh, I think in its early days. So uh, I think that uh, this is a real uh, opportunity. Um, I would also like to mention that uh, Convisit is uh, backed by some of the biggest uh, VCs here in Israel. One of them is our crowd and another one is Pitango, uh, which is a well-known fund uh, here in Israel. We're actually uh, the winners of uh, an AI and machine learning competition uh, where uh, over 100 companies participated. Um, and uh, Basically, I think that uh, we now see our, all our effort uh, bear fruits, and uh, it's quite amazing to see the interest from uh, our partners uh, that are really bringing huge deals to us uh, recently. Um, I saw that uh, people asked, okay, uh, uh, here's a bit, uh, like you can see what our customers and par partners are saying about us, uh, Steve, I'll let you... Uh, yeah, just again, uh, I think we're doing something that's quite unique. Uh, our customers and, and partners are, are, you know, really saying, uh, right, we can visit elegantly solves one of the biggest headaches of product and website analytics. Uh, again, this is a, a known problem that's existed for a long time, and, and we've come with a really different approach. Uh, and I think, you know, and the market's, you know, really excited about it. So uh, that's kind of, you know, what we're hearing. Mm -hmm. Um, I saw that uh, you had a few questions. I'll just mention uh, two things. First of all, Convisit is GDPR compliant. So uh, although uh, we track uh, sense, like we, we track user behavior data, the uh, data is absolutely anonymous uh, as long as the customer is not sending us uh, customer IDs. So uh, we can definitely work with European companies. You can see that EasyPark, uh, for example, is one of them. Uh, also, uh, I saw a question, uh, Marco asked uh, whether our users uh, are the sole owner uh, of, uh, of the data or we can use the data in other ways. So uh, no, uh, we prefer to work with many companies and enable a solution that uh, is GDPR compliant. We don't use it for other purposes. Uh, the, the owner of the data is, uh, is the customer. Uh, Okay, and uh, Francesco asked uh, whether uh, it sounds like the product is up and running. Is it therefore only a matter of sales? What are the expected expected product developments in the future? So uh, I'll mention a few. Uh, so first of all, the product now is up and running, and we actually started selling only in Q2 this year. It's quite amazing to see customer responses and uh, our partners' responses to the product, uh, although uh, the product is young. Uh, in our roadmap, we have uh, mob native mobile support. Currently, we support web and hybrid applications. Uh, we want to support native mobile apps as well uh, uh, as part of our efforts in uh, 2023. Uh, and we definitely have uh, some uh, more uh, interesting directions in the future in order to be a big standalone company. Um, but uh, overall, I think that we're trying to be very uh, like a uh, customer focused. We're uh, listening to our customers and adding, uh, besides adding, adding features all the time, I think that the mobile is the next uh, challenge. Um, I think that uh, these are the so the important things, yeah. 
Thank you. Thank you, Daniel and Steven. And uh, uh, it's open the, the window. So if you want to do to do more questions, uh, we have some time. So. Okay. Uh, in the in the meanwhile, I would like just to to highlight uh, uh, maybe a shift to Italian in, in soon in order uh, because you know our investors are mainly here. The one the ones connected are Italian, so uh, the dates about the Q and A, the next step, uh, and some uh, and something about the operation again. So thank you. If there are some questions coming, you can keep it now. Otherwise, we have the Q and A dedicated, as you know. Sure. Quindi uh, in italiano. Bene, beh, siamo contenti di vedere comunque anche diciamo, una presenza fino alla fine. Eh, queste appunto sono le presentazioni come dice Antonella dei due progetti che abbiamo selezionato. Ci tengo a sottolineare che sono frutto di un processo di selezione abbastanza complesso che ci ha accompagnato d'estate e anche nelle prime fasi diciamo dopo l'estate. L'idea è quella di fare questo veicolo che per noi rappresenta un'opportunità molto interessante perché abbiamo la possibilità di investire in due società diverse, come avete sentito, eh, innovative, anche in una fase di sviluppo differente, sempre nell'ottica di fornire un prodotto che sia diversificato al massimo e che possa ridurre ancora di più diciamo, il gap un pochino che potremmo avere con questa tipologia di investimenti, un po' anche come feedback che abbiamo avuto dalla prima raccolta che abbiamo fatto su Bina che comunque è andata, è andata molto bene, anzi la società sta proseguendo bene e quindi siamo, siamo contenti. Eh, io non voglio rubare altro tempo, dato che comunque siamo già più o meno verso la fine. Eh, vi ricordo che la sessione di Q&A dedicata a Convizit sarà il prossimo 24 novembre e come vedete adesso è comparso in chat, grazie a Paola, potete registrarvi già eh, all'evento, eh, quindi è già aperta l'iscrizione appunto ripeto 24 novembre sempre alle 18 dedicata solo al progetto con visit per quanto riguarda invece la sessione di Q&A e speculare su CY Firm forniremo la data nei prossimi giorni eh, sarà verso la fine del mese mm, ricordo il ticket minimo 10k eh, in questo caso che saranno splittati su eh, entrambi i progetti in maniera 50 50 nel senso che chi decide di approcciare questo investimento avrà 5.000 euro investiti su un progetto e 5.000 sull'altro. Faccio l'esempio col ticket minimo, chiaramente uguale anche con gli altri ticket. Um, quindi Antonella magari reshift in inglese, che saluto e dico che... So, uh, thank, you, thank you to the founders. Uh, we just uh, recap the, the next dates about the Q&A sessions. And um, for any further question you are available, uh, also before the date uh, and um, nothing so this is this is the end of this webinar uh, we would like to, to thank you again for the explanation it was pretty clear and i just leave uh, leave the last word to antonella maybe if you want to add, add something to close yeah thank you stefano uh, thank you steven thank you daniel thank you dash um, we are it's, uh, so interesting and we are so happy to uh, that uh, your presentation uh, you presented to our investors um, uh, we would like to uh, to introduce also uh, the, your project to our investors in uh, in the q a session and uh, also uh, i i see that there are uh, dion and Simon from our crowd hi dion and uh, if uh, you have any question, we are here. Uh, grazie a tutti per essere stati con noi. Vi ricordo appunto ancora le, le due sessioni. Eh, speriamo di avere colto diciamo, l'interesse e preso il vostro interesse con queste due iniziative che noi riteniamo assolutamente straordinarie, sia per lo stato di sviluppo sia per la qualità dei founders. E eh, pensiamo che appunto in tutto il panorama del del, del, diciamo di quello che siamo riusciti a vedere del, del, del flow di, di Our Crowd che oggettivamente è, è molto, molto interessante abbiamo scelto queste due perché eh, appunto riteniamo che abbiano ancora di più una marcia in più quindi speriamo che questa sia anche la vostra, la vostra opinione e ripeto siamo assolutamente disponibili nel verificare, nel, nell'approfondire, perché ovviamente sono progetti complessi e, eh, e siamo ovviamente sia io che Stefano, anche Barbara che adesso non c'è, però eh, e ovviamente i founder sono disponibili anche eventualmente a, una, 
uh, dei one to one. Io vi ringrazio e vedete il codice per chi non fosse ancora registrato in, in piattaforma potete con questo, QR, con questo QR code eh, scansionarlo e entrare direttamente nella piattaforma d'oro e dove potrete trovare appunto i documenti. La campagna si aprirà fra pochi giorni non appena sistemiamo una cosa tecnica e con conto corrente. E basta, direi che siamo a posto. Io vi ringrazio e niente. Grazie, buona serata. Grazie. Good Thank evening. You. Thank you. Good evening. Good, Bye, good, Kuma. good night. Bye, Sierra. Bye. 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 Thank you.